Well, yes, hello there. My name is Sean Sandbrook, and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide, the show. This week, we're on location here at Gardenland Resort in Italy. It's the opening day of Oblivion the Black Hole. It's an absolutely awesome ride, and in this show, I'm going to tell you all about it. That means it's time to cue those titles and drop into Oblivion, of course. I'm not on the roller coaster, and when I'm on a roller coaster, I don't scream quite that loud. But yes, welcome to the latest episode of the show, and of course, the opening of Oblivion the Black Hole. It's going to be a great show. Uh, throughout this week, we'll have a week classes like Merch Paradise, where we're going to be looking at the awesome merchandise, what you can get inside this shop. We're going to be looking at the awesome design of the ride, all the other amazing features of the ride, and also some of the other rides here at the park, like Raptor, which was the first ever BM Wing Coaster, Mammoth, which is a fantastic mine train coaster, and all also some other awesome dart rides and water rides. So without further ado, let's get straight in and have a little look at some of the rides here at Godland Resort. <laughs> So yes, we're going to start off here at Gardenland with Raptor just behind me. Now this was the first B&M wing coaster to ever open in the world. Of course, wing coasters is something that's developed a hell of a lot with the B&M concept. It all started with Furious Backo, a ride that we all know for being very, very rough. It's a Port of Ventura, it's an Intamin ride. Uh, and what the difference is with that to the B&M uh, ride is basically the train sits um, sort of alongside the track, whereas on the B&M rides you actually sit below the track. We do think, and um, this isn't a proven theory, but we do think this is one of the reasons for Furious Backo being as rough as it is. If you have ridden the ride at Port Ventura that opened in 2007, you will know how rough it is compared to the wing coasters. So of course this was the first B&M wing coaster. It opened here at Gardenland Resort in 2011. It went down with good success. I remember seeing all sorts of reviews from it when it first opened. And it's a very different feel ride to what Gardenland have gone for in the past. They've gone for a magical theme. This here is based on destruction uh, and things being destroyed. Uh, and that's what I quite like about the ride. I think it fits the park quite well. Um, you've got all the happy areas and then right in the middle you've got this sort of darker area. Personally, I quite like that. I'm not sure about other people in the area and uh, the locals who do come to the park. Personally, I like having that descriptive theme in the middle. I think it plays off really, really well. So as you can see by some of the shots of the ride, you've got some amazing head choppers. It doesn't have an inverted drop. Um, like the Swarm at Thorpe Park or Flup de Damon at Heidi Park. It goes straight into your standard drop um, for banking round into a beautiful overbank where it's actually really, really forceful. When I first rode the ride um, uh, this morning, I was really surprised at how forceful that section is. It's actually one of the most forceful of, of the B&M wing coasters that I've ridden. Obviously, I've done the Swarm, I've done this, uh, and Flup de Damon at Heidi Park. And they're the three I've been lucky enough to ride. And this, I would say, it is one of the more forceful rides. Some great hay choppers. Uh, of course, you've got some trees. You can see it going through there. Uh, beautiful inversion straight through that. And uh, some lovely helixes around the ride as well. It's quite a terrain hugging coaster. It doesn't go very high. This is the highest part of the ride here. Once you've passed the overbank, um, it does stay quite low to the ground. Uh, and it goes all down beside me here. Um, very, very low to the ground through various tunnels and all sorts of stuff. Really, really good ride. Absolutely love it. So let's have a little bit of off-ride footage of Raptor here at Gardenland Resort. Awesome shots there of Raptor, um, which is one of my favourite rides here at the park, the wing coaster. As you can see there, it's a really firm addition. Now moving on to the 2015 edition. Now Oblivion at Alton Towers is one of those rides where everybody's always talked about it. When it opened in 1998, not many people really had a clue what was going on in the industry at the time, what was going to happen for that ride, and it remained a mystery. Much the same of what's happened here with Oblivion the Black Hole. What this ride has is a follow-up 
to the Oblivion story from Alton Towers. It's not a copy, and it is actually quite different. This is more of a happy, vibrant theme of the Oblivion, what you get in here, instead of the dark and sinister Oblivion of Alton Towers. As you can see by the coaster and its white sort of scenery, um, that, that's what it's sort of flowing out to be. So obviously a few ride stats for you. It's a flawless roller coaster from BNM. You've got three trains. Each train has got three rows that hold six riders. It is a flawless dive coaster, meaning the floor folds in. Bit of footage on your screen now of that doing that just there, which is great. Awesome light effects, which all move, and the audio counts down from three to the launch before um, starting the ascent up the lift hill. Once you get to the top of the lift hill, it's not like Oblivion at Alton Towers, where you actually uh, fasten onto another chain, which actually slows the train down around the top. Uh, again, the footage is on your screen there. Um, you can see the train actually moves quite swiftly, quite fastly round to the uh, precipice, where it holds there for around three to four seconds, holding yourself over what you see behind me there. And that there is a lot of head choppers. Uh, really, really good there. You've got a good few head choppers. You've got the van, which sort of is sucked into the black hole. And as you can see, we're sort of in the western area now. Uh, and what they've done here, the ride designers have implemented the theme that you've got the western side here, you've got the sort of futuristic uh, sort of camp up there, and it all ties in being sucked into this black hole, like a black hole's just appeared in the middle of Gardaland, which is really good. Once you come down here, you go into a tunnel. There is spoilers in this, so you go into mist, you get mildly moist in the face. Us enthusiasts all love that. Strobe's all in the tunnel there, which is great. Coming up out of that, straight into an Immelman loop, back round, down under another head chopper where you have your photo took. Again, more footage on your screen, which is great. As you can tell, I'm very excited about this ride, absolutely passionate about it. I love it to pieces. Up into an airtime moment before coming round into a 270 helix. And if that wasn't enough for this dive carousel, it then finishes you off with a nice, very, very slow heartline roll. Look at how slow it goes through that there, guys. I mean, if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what's going to this year. This is a great coaster. It's definitely one of my favourite dive coasters, if not the best dive coaster I've ever done. Bear in mind, I've done Oblivion, Shikra, Craker, Heidi Park, some of the best dive coasters out there. And this one, it is really, really tall as well. It's a great ride. I'm going to shut up talking about it. Let's have a little look at some more footage here of Oblivion, the black hole, new for 2015, here at the Gardenland Resort in Italy. to an amazing selection of thrill roller coasters. As you can see behind me here, Atlantis, this fantastic water coaster, is one of the best theme ride experiences I've ever seen. This is absolutely beautiful. It's got two very, very speedy lift hills, two awesome drops. If you're on the front, it's more like a log flume because you get soaked with the water um, on the drop there, not the water that you hit at the bottom, but actually the water that's flowing down the track gets you absolutely soaked, uh, which is great. On the back, you don't get as wet, but you do get some cracking air time. There's no restraints on this. It's literally a normal clicking seatbelt. Um, so yeah, you do get plenty of air time on this, which is great. Another ride which is very closely themed to this, just behind this area, um, so I'll put you this good up on your screen, it is the Jungle Rapids. Really, really good ride. Again, very well themed. It reminds me a lot of Angora and Paul's Aventura with the theming. You got elephants, you got a volcano, you got all sorts of elements in there. It's a really, really good ride. It's a long ride as well, about five minutes. Um, you've got a whirlpool section, you've got two massive waterfalls. Uh, and also, what I do quite like, you've got a massive fountain which just blasts up, which is absolutely awesome. Really good ride. Now we're going to talk about something not quite as awesome, but probably my worst coaster on the park here, and that is the suspended looping coaster known as Blue Tornado. There's some footage of it on your screen. Uh, again, some people might like these, but not my favourite rides, as I'm sure you all know by now. Um, but again, it is probably one of the better ones of the standard layout, um, like in Fusion, for example, Blackpool Pleasure Beach. This is definitely a better version. However, I still do prefer Kamala in Flamingo Land and of course Odyssey um, and Fancy Island when it's operating. So yeah, it's a great, it's it's an alright ride, it's a great version of it, but it's not my favourite ride here, of course. Let's move on and have a little look at some footage of the rides I've just mentioned.
Yes, Gardenland is also home to two awesome dart rides. First off, you've got Ramesses, which is just behind me here. Um, now, this is actually built underground. Well, both of the dart rides are built underground, which is quite cool. So, as you can see behind me here, this beautiful facade leads you into an interactive shooting dart ride. It's got a bit of a strange theme. Um, it's based, obviously, on all the pyramids of Egypt and that sort of thing. Um, but they sort of send into robots near the end, and I'm not quite sure what happens, but I do quite like it, and it is quite cool. Um, probably about a five, six minute ride in there, which is really, really good. Show some footage of that in a moment. Also, you've got I Corsair, which is basically a knockoff of Pirates of the Caribbean, but it's a little bit stranger than that. Not only is it underground, um, but it's also um, got a really good layout, some really strange scenery in there. You've got caves, you've got a section um, which makes you feel like you're underwater, which is quite cool as well. Uh, and then we're going to move on to two of the other rides, what we've got here at Gardland. Two roller coasters you see behind me here. You've got Sequoia Adventure, which is that ride from SNS just there. Um, not my favourite ride at all. Basically, that ride, we do believe it is up for sale at the moment. A lot of people did think that the ride had been removed already from the park. Apparently, it's up for sale, so we're going to have to see what the future is for that. Um, we've been on it a couple of times this trip. Not one of my favourites at all. It's not really too rough. Um, but it's just that position of being uh, hung under the track for about three or four seconds as it moves along, um, which is a bit of a shame. Finally then, you've got the Vacoma corkscrew in the background painted in green. Uh, that there magic mountain, unfortunately we've not managed to ride that this trip due to maintenance work which is ongoing. We believe in 10 days time that's going to be reopening. So if you are planning on coming in the, uh, very, very soon, it probably will be open for you. Uh, make sure you do send it to me uh, for the show what you do think of that ride. It does have the unique uh, Vacoma corkscrew restraints uh, as well. It doesn't have the standard ones when clicked down. Uh, it's actually got a bit like the wing coaster and um, how it has uh, sort of a chest pad on there as well. Some really good rides here at Gardenland Resort. Questions, questions, questions everywhere. So yes, it's back and on location this week with some really awesome background music. I'm not quite sure where that's come from, but I really do like it. It is, of course, Ask Me Anything here from the Garland Hotel. A little bit about the Garland Hotel then. It's actually located about a kilometre away from the actual main Garland theme park. But as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, we're in the main lobby area of the hotel now. And as you can see, you've got the grand chandelier behind me, a staircase, some really nice theming based on the characters. And um, there's also themed rooms here for the characters and also, of course, Oblivion the Black Hole, um, which is the brand new ride here. Uh, it's great that they've done a theme room. It reminds me quite a bit of what they do over at Alden Towers back in the UK with their smile room and, uh, and things over the years as well, which is really, really cool. So yes, time for Ask Me Anything. My first question has come in from Alfie Rooney and has asked me, what was my first proper roller coaster? Now, if we're going to say proper roller coaster, which is my first thrill ride, it is going to be the Rattlesnake. Um, which was a Chessington World of Adventures. Absolutely love the Rattlesnake, he's still operating to this day, and it's a really good ride, so thanks for sending in your question. Uh, Marcus Funnel has said, if you could time travel back to any year to visit Alton Towers, what year would it be and why? Well, I'm gonna actually say 1994, because as much as I was alive in 1994, because I was born in 93, um, I was only one years old, so unfortunately, uh, I can't remember anything about Nemesis opening day. I'd love to have been there on Nemesis opening day, much like we have been today for the opening of Oblivion and the Black Hole. I would have loved to have been there on that first train of Nemesis. And back then, there was a lot more secrecy around the surrounding rides, so it would have been great to have been on it. So yeah, definitely uh, 1994 for the opening of Nemesis at Alton Towers. Thanks for your question, Marcus. Really, really good one, that. Third question, uh, Owen Rogers. If the Cross Valley Wooden Coaster is a myth at Alton Towers, what would you have for SWAs? I love B&M coasters and I love hyper coasters. And as much as some people might say a hyper coaster could never be done at Alton Towers due to the height, if it was a cross valley coaster, it could be done. It would not need to go any higher than sort of 50 feet above ground. You could take it down the back of the valley and you could get a bloody good first drop out of that, which would be really good. I'd love to see it. Who knows if something like that's going to happen. Um, but we're going to have to see what the future holds for Alton Towers. Good tune coming up, we like this one. <laughs> Final question then is Aaron Thomas Gray, who has sent in, what's your favourite ride theme song slash soundtrack? It's this. Are you joking? Uh, my favourite soundtrack, it's going to be Blue Fire, the Rover Park. The onboard score, what well, I'm a score have done for that. Not the original one when the ride opened, but the I'm a score that replaced it. Really good soundtrack. If you've not seen it, YouTube it, just put in I'm a score Blue Fire, your Rover Park. You'll hear it. It's about a two minute track. Really good soundtrack that I love. That's all for Ask Me Anything. If you do have any questions um, for me to answer, all you need to do is send them in at ThemeParkWW on Twitter or via private message on Facebook.
So yes, it is time for Merge Paradise, and here we are in the gold suite of the beautiful Gardaland Hotel. It's right in the top of the hotel, and it's absolutely beautiful, so make sure you check it out on Gardaland's website if you are planning on coming here, because to be honest, it's not too pricey, and it's well worth paying the extra from one of the normal rooms downstairs. Let's have a little look then at what merchandise I've got from the Oblivion the Black Hole shop um, from this visit before we have a little look at your merchandise. First off then, going to show you this. Ooh, it's a nice little resin, look at that there. Beautiful Oblivion the Black Hole resin. Uh, obviously, they've made a the little tweak to it there. It's got the three rows on it. Um, oh, the label's just come off, that's how fresh it is. <laughs> Spread out of the shop today, which is quite cool. Got a nice mug, look at that. Nice white mug. And inside there, the orange. I really do love how the white and the orange really sort of contrast. I think it really adds a lot to the merchandise and the ride itself. You got this, basically, more or less like the white mug, but this is a, pretty much the same, but in black. Uh, and it's orange inside there. Again, really nice use of the colours. Moving on to a nice big item now. Here we go. It's a brolly. <laughs> Look at this, an oblivion the black hole brolly. You just see the brand in there. Nice quality brolly. Uh, and yeah, that's absolutely great, especially when you don't hit it against the lamp here in the room, which is quite cool. Um, and then finally, this, which is a nice bag. Simple but effective bag. It's got a nice little zip on the front there. Ideal for if you want to store something a bit more like wallets and phones in, which is really quite cool. Make sure we've uh, picked one of them up if you do come over here to Garland. Let's have a little look at your merchandise then here on the show. First off, you've got Richard Jones, first year of Nemesis certificate, uh, and also the story tape and a pencil sharpener. Oh, pencil sharpener, what more could he want? Um, but yeah, he's got the original tape there from Nemesis. Really good item. Myself, I've actually got that in the world of theme parks back home as well, and um, back in the UK. Really good item, so thanks for sending that in there. Harry Watts has got Alton Towers Jigsaw Fridge Magnet. Again, a really nice item there. What you can, I think you can still purchase um, those in Towers Trading, which is quite cool. Now we've got the resort branding on as well. Thanks for that, Harry. Uh, ben has got some Bubbleworks merchandise. Love Bubbleworks. It's has a new mug for this year, actually, as well. So I'll make sure I pick one of them up next time I go to Chessing Tong. Morgan has sent in a Vampire Magnet. Love that. Vampire. Great classic ride. Um, something I really do treasure a lot at Chessington. And then finally, Anna Curtis has got some Disney Christmas baubles. What you don't realise about the world of theme parks is the whole ceiling down the middle is full of 20 original Disney, uh, Disney baubles. And every time I go to a Disney park, I buy a new bauble. Um, so I'm looking forward to going to California later this year and get some more baubles for my collection. That's all for Merch Paradise. Uh, if you do want to send anything, usual ways at Theme Park WW on Twitter or as a private message on the Theme Park Worldwide Facebook page. Drop us a like while there as well. You get live updates and competitions. So yes, it's time for the final section of Theme Park Worldwide, the show on location here from Gardaland in Italy. And it's of course, is time for Interact With Me, one of my favorite sections of the show. First up this week, happy birthday to Shaz Payne, who had a great day at Thorpe Park Resort. Next up is a flume on-ride photo there from Adam Lines. Looks like you're having a great time there on the old Alton Classic, so thanks for saying that in. And you've got Alex there with a photo with me at Drayton Manor. It was great to meet you uh, there at Drayton Manor. Um, next up you've got Ben, who took his fiance to Chessington for the first time, went to Bubble Works, saw the magical fountain room at the end, and her face absolutely lit up. She loved it. Much like the fountains here, it's magical. Fountains and lights, what more could you want? It is very, very magical. Um, you've got Morgan with a swarm on ride photo. First time on the swarm, really, really good coaster. I love my wing coasters. That's why it's been so good to get out here to Gardland and get on Raptor. Um, so that was great. And finally, a very, very happy birthday to Tom Armour. Um, that's all for Interact With Me. Happy birthday to you there. If you have got anything, make sure you tweet it in at ThemeParkWW on Twitter and also by liking the Theme Park Worldwide Facebook page, saying there's a private message on there and it'll be in next week's show. That's all for our on-location episode from Gardaland. Hope you've enjoyed it. The vlog will be online in the next few days. And a very, very special thank you to the one and only, it is Joe Beasley for being the awesome cameraman in this episode of the show. It's been great. Hope you've liked the footage. Hope you've liked our uh, video of Oblivion the Black Hole. What a great ride that is. And congratulations to Merlin and all the team of designers on that coaster. It's absolutely great. I love it. We all love it. And it's been a great episode of the show. My name's Sean Sandbrook. Thanks for watching Theme Park Worldwide on location from Gardaland. And that means it's time to cue those credits. See you later, guys. Sleep tight. <laughs>